Today I'm firing up the Kiln R pizza oven from Everdoor. This oven looks pretty darn sleek and it's packed with some really cool features, including an adjustable bottom burner, a U-shaped adjustable top burner, and a rotating 16 inch pizza stone, hence the R in its name. Does the Everdoor Kiln R's build and performance justify its asking price? Well, I don't really know. So I'm gonna unbox the oven and put it to the test to find out. Another day, another pizza oven. So this is how it comes when it's shipped. Well, okay, so right off the bat, got the instruction manual. And uh, I'm not sure what this is yet, but oh, looks like a plug. So this might be for the ignition and the for the electrical, for the rotating stone and the, uh, the ignition. Uh, got some hard cardboard here. Kind of keeps everything from shifting around the box, I guess. Yeah, the framework for the packaging. There we go, look at you. I believe this is the sand color. So they come in three colors. There's a terracotta, a graphite, and a sand color. And I asked for the sand color. And that's what I got. All right, so I guess I'm gonna have to lift this thing up. And it's heavy, that's for sure. Oh, no, I gotta take this thing out of the box in order to get what's inside out. Oh yeah, she's heavy. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. Using my legs, not my back. Oh. Try to figure out where the cord's going here. Oh, it's on, it's on the other side. All right. Oh, shoot, man, this thing's heavy. This thing's like, <laughs> I think the weight of this thing's about 65 pounds. So uh, not nearly as portable as other ovens, but I don't think that was the intent with this thing. This oven is meant to be more station, stationary, just a countertop oven. So heavier, smaller, and let's say like a big wood-fired oven, but definitely something that you might want to keep put wherever you place it. Wow, this is a pretty long propane line, which is great because it can wrap under the table and connect to um, one of my canisters. I can either wrap it around and have a little less slack and go over the side, or I can just move the canister to the right-hand side of the, the table and just go from there, which is what I might do. All right, taking everything out of the oven. There's the stone. Man, they pack it well. This is packed well. <laughs> this stuff's not moving. Okay. I just don't want to damage anything inside the oven. Here we go. Okay. All right, see this, this guy right here? This? That is what the rotating stone sits on. And then there's a U-shaped burner all the way in the back that wraps around the back, maybe three quarters of the oven. I don't know, from you know all the way over from left to right. That's pretty cool. Let's get the stone out of its styrofoam packaging. Okay, fairly good shape here. Oh, got a little chip going on right here. Nothing I'm gonna worry about though. Now, this is the piece that goes in front and it is totally encased in foam. This looks like the more fragile piece for sure. There we go. So this is in front of the rotating stone. Before I get these stones in the oven, let's compare the thickness of them to other stones from other oven manufacturers, all right? So here's one. I'm not gonna really tell you what manufacturer. They're all very well known. You can see that the kiln might be a hair thicker than this one. Let's play a little guessing game. Anybody know what brand this is from? <laughs> Leave it in the comments below. Next, we've got this stone here. Here, I'll rotate like that. You can see that the kiln stone is noticeably thicker than this stone. One more comparison, and this doesn't really count, but I just wanted to show you. This is a Biscotto stone, and you can see that it's really, really thick. And when I compare it 
to the kiln stone. I mean, there's just, there's no comparison really. It's about twice as thick. I don't even think you can get one of these Biscotta stones in the kiln, but uh, yeah, just wanted to show you that. All right, I gotta get this stone on that rotating part there. How easily does it sit on there? There, I think that's, there's a little bit of play back and forth. And this just slides on like so. Perfect. Really quickly, let's talk dimensions. The height of this oven is just under 15 inches. The depth, excuse me, I'm gonna look at my phone, is 29.1 inches. The width is just shy of 26 inches. It's 25.9 inches in width. And the opening right here is a scooch over 20 inches wide. So a lot of room to launch a 16 inch pizza uh, with a few inches on each side um, so you're not banging the peel around in the oven. The outer shell of the kiln is made with powder coated stainless steel. The base is stainless steel as well. The front trim piece is aluminum. The firebox and the burner are all stainless steel and there's a layer of ceramic fiber insulation between the firebox and the outer shell of the oven. Next step is to add some batteries to this puppy. In order to go cordless, you need a, a one double A here. You gotta make sure you put the batteries in, in the appropriate direction. So I'll just screw that back in. That's the igniter. Perfect. Next are batteries for the rotating stone. It takes four double A's. One, two, three, and four. So the cover goes back on, and boom. Hold on, if you wanted to use the power cord, you'd do this. Slide the cord through this little hole right there, and then you simply just plug it in like that, and then run your power to an outlet. In order to light the kiln, there's a few things you gotta do, okay? First, let's light the main burner. This knob right here controls that. I'm gonna push it in, you hear the igniter, and then you're gonna turn. Perfect. All right, that's the main burner. Now we gotta get the stone rotating and fire up the bottom burner. This button right here operates stone rotation. Just push it in for a second, hold it, and release. I'm not sure if you can see the stone rotation. Hopefully you can, but it does turn 2.5 times per minute. The knob on the right here operates the bottom burner. You just do the same thing. You push in, hear the igniter, turn, and it ignites. It's pretty hard to look down this peephole right here, but this is how you tell that the bottom burner is actually lit by looking down that little hole. Everdor recommends doing a full burn for 30 minutes and then letting the oven cool down just to get rid of some of those factory oils and stuff that are still on the inside of the oven. Once that's done, this kiln is ready to bake some pizza. All right, right around 750 degrees Fahrenheit. That's perfect. Here is my pizza dough. This is an overnight sourdough. And I'm just gonna make this pizza without anything on it just to test the stone temp and see if we're close because this is the first time working with this oven. So. Come on, a little overproofed maybe, I don't know. This looks pretty good, let's throw this in the oven, just like so. And this is with the stone on, on rotate. The fact that uh, I think what I need to do is turn the rotating stone off first, launch the piece and then turn it back on. That'll keep the pizza round. I think what happened was it kind of got twisted as I launched it. I think we're probably pretty good. Yeah, this bubbled up in the middle, so it didn't really touch the stone much, but around the perimeter it looks pretty good. So the plain dough went well. I think the stone's at the right temp for this oven because they're all different, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a full pizza with this dough. I'll fire it, 
and see how it turns out now. Okay, hopefully this one comes out a little easier. Yes, it did. Perfect. Got to get a lot of flour. Give it a good stretch. Gravity does a lot of the work here, but using the knuckles helps stretch it out. That's a pretty good size pizza. It'll stretch when I get it up onto the peel too. Okay. Pizza sauce, San Marzano tomato sauce. There we go. Parmesan, along with some mozzarella. Perfect. Just completely unload some pepperoni on this pizza. Light it up. There, how does that look? I'm gonna turn the rotating stone off. There, now I'm gonna fire the pizza. Get the flame up. Turn the stone back on and let it roll. Now I shouldn't have to take this pizza out at all while it cooks because the stone's rotating. It's doing all the work for me, more or less. All right, let's, let's see what this looks like. There you go. Stone, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, my first time managing two different burners and I realized that the bottom burner underneath the stone was on low, it wasn't up. Even so, the bottom of this pizza looks pretty darn good. See, not bad. And the top looks great too. Kind of wish the mozzarella was melted just a little bit more, but that's a personal preference. The, ro the roni cups are present. Let's get this on a, on its own pan. We got the uh, Everdoor pizza wheel. That looks yummy. Hmm. Top notch. All right. I'm gonna cook another pizza, but the bottom burner is gonna be turned up now. And we're gonna keep that stone rotating. Then maybe after that, I'll stop the stone from rotating and I'll do a manual turn and see how the oven performs that way too. Oh wait, <laughs> I almost launched it without turning the stone off. Okay, stone's not rotating. Pizza's in, stone is rotating. And let's see what happens. That stone, the bottom burner is up all the way as well. I'm gonna turn the flame up top down to medium. Everdoor recommended doing that. And I noticed on the first bake that the top started cooking faster than the bottom. So uh, just playing around with settings, seeing what works best. How's that? All right, I just pulled the pizza. I'm going to see how fast the stone recovers. All right, here's the under. You see that? All right. Top of the pizza looks pretty darn good. Mozzarella is a little bit more melty, which is nice. Uh, I feel like I managed the heat up top, the U-shaped burner about the same as I did with the first pizza, except that bottom burner was turned up this time. So it definitely got uh, a little bit more cooked on the bottom of the pizza, which is nice. All right, here we go. So it's basically recovered in about a minute and a half, I would say. We're at 780, well, just shy of 800, 785 degrees Fahrenheit, a minute and 30 seconds. Okay, enough with the rotating stone. I'm gonna turn that off. And that means I have to turn the bottom burner off too because uh, Everdor says you do not wanna have the stone static 
while the bottom burner is on, it could cause damage to the stone. So I'll turn that off. We'll cook a pizza just with the U-shaped burner and uh, I'll manually turn the pizza and we'll see how that turns out. I like the U-shaped burner. It really sort of hugs the pizza most of the way around it. And it's easy to get in and out of there, even though the stone is in two pieces right here and there's a little bit of a gap. Not an issue whatsoever. Oh yeah, almost ready here. Just that last side in the back there should, it should be done. Yep, nice and toasty on the bottom, man, that's for sure. How about that? Look good? All right. That's nice and crispy. Uh, some folks would consider that uh, a little overcooked. Some folks, it's perfect. For me, yeah, I'd, I'd crush it. Everdoor pizza wheel. This is also the their uh, pizza peel. It comes off in two pieces for storage. So here we go. Let's take a look at, uh, oh yeah. These all look pretty good. There you go. Not too bad. Oh, man. Moment of truth. Mmm, they're hot. Oh, delicious though. Always so good. Okay. Final thoughts. So what do I think about this oven? Honestly, I think it's great. I think it's well built and that the materials used are of high quality. I had no issues setting it up and using it. I cooked three different pizzas using three different settings and they all turned out really well. The retail price for the Kiln R is $800. It has two burners and the rotating stone. Everdur also makes a kiln, a regular one, that does not have a rotating stone and it has one single burner, that U-shaped burner on top. That retails for 700, I believe. And right now, there's a couple places online that you can find them for 10% off. So all in all, I think the pricing is in line with the quality and the style of the oven. Oh, it also comes with a two-year warranty, so that helps too. And I think that the oven itself will have longevity. I can't speak to that yet because we've only had the oven for two days, but I feel like this oven is, um, is gonna last a while. The company has also been around since the 30s, you know, making consumer goods and stuff. So when you think about a company that's been around that long, they gotta be doing something right. Am I right or am I wrong? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check the links in the video description down below for how you can buy the oven and uh, anything else that I think is relevant to the video and the product. Catch you next time.